All right, welcome to this tutorial for uh, procedural NPC crowds. I'm going to show you how to set up custom characters or scalable meshes, such as this, um, instead of the instead of the mannequin that it comes with, which is this right here. Okay, so assuming you have your characters imported, which I've already done, um, so they're all right here, and you have an animation blueprint. I'm ignore this; it just looks weird because of this rig. Um, but and you have an animation blueprint. I'm just going to use a single animation of walking, um, but you'll probably want to use an animation blueprint. What you want to do, once you have those two things, the models and the animations, you want to go in and you want to go to the folder that you have the blueprint in for the character. Um, I recommend moving the demo content if you're using it to your actual content, because if I push an update, all of these are going to be reset. So make sure you move it to your actual content, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it in here. So um, you'll want to go in and create a character. So BP Pedestrian 2, we'll call it Pedestrian 2. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to go to the mesh, and you can just leave that as is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, actually, we need to set it real quick. So I'm going to do Mixmo1, that's what I named them, and then I will set the walking animation. You will set it to an animation blueprint in yours. I'm going to set this to negative 90 so it faces the arrow. Alright, and then now that you have that, the next thing you want to do is you want to click this BP Pedestrian 2, the cell. You want to go to AI Controller. You want to change it to the AIC Pedestrian that comes with the plugin, or if you have your own D2 or Crowd Controller, you can put that in. And then the next thing you want to do is type in place and world. And on an auto possess AI, you want to choose place and world and spawn. If you leave it as default, whenever you spawn them through the spawners, they won't move. So make sure you change that. And then what you want to do is on begin play, you want to you, you want to drag off the mesh. Go to set skeletal mesh asset in previous before engine 5.3, such as 5.1, 5.2. Um, it, this would just be called Set Skeletal Mesh. In 5.3, they, re they renamed it to Set Skeletal Mesh Asset. Okay, so you're going to plug that in, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable here. We're going to call this um, Scalable Meshes. All right, we're going to set this as a variable type to Skeletal Mesh right here. S skeletal Mesh, okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into an array. All right, there we go. We're going to add our skeletal meshes here. I've called them Mixamo 1, Mixamo 2, Mixamo 3, and Mixamo 4. Okay, so now we're going to drag this variable out. We're going to use the random array item of uh, uh, node. Sorry, I was thinking variable. Node, you're going to plug this in. Okay, now in the spawners, you are going to go to pedestrian system, spawners, BP spawner, all right, and you're just going to change this, the NPC to spawn, to BP pedestrian 2, because that's what we named it. Okay, and now if we load in, we'll have all these different um, characters. You can use this with metahumans and stuff. One thing to keep in mind is, depending on the model of, or the, the complexity of your model, the performance could dip, so just keep that in mind. Metahumans are typically pretty heavy. I don't know what the polygon counts on these are, um, but you could just usually you can just set up LODs and stuff like that. Um, I, I believe Unreal is working on Nanite for scalable meshes, but yeah, uh, that's how you set up custom characters. Uh, the final thing I want to show you is if you are deciding to use the pedestrian blueprint that it comes with, it's the same process. You just want to go to the event graph. You can delete if you, if you're not if you're done with the demo content, you can delete this, the toggle behavior type, the NPC action. You can delete all of those. Okay. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete them because we don't we don't need them. Just reinstall it if I need it. All right. Uh, so I'll begin play. What you're gonna want to do. We're going to want to do the same thing we did there, which is set skeletal mesh asset. Okay, we need to change the animation blueprint as well. So I'll show you how to do that in code as well. 
um, we're going to create the uh, scalable meshes array. Remember, it's a type scalable mesh. You just type in scalable mesh and you do the object reference. Okay, we'll make it an array like the other one. We'll add some scalable meshes. And this is the easiest way and cleanest way I've found to um, set up the randomization of the meshes. Maximum of two, maximum of three, and maximum of four. There we go. Okay, we're gonna plug a random array item into this. All right, and then I'm gonna show you how to set a uh, animation blueprint at runtime. There. Okay, so it looks like Unreal. Um, they did something, they changed uh, how to set the animation blueprint at runtime. So I'm not entirely sure how they did that. So we'll just go ahead and set it here. Um, we'll call this, we'll do maximo, we'll change the scalable mesh if we can get asset. And then we'll call it walking. There we go. And now if we go back to the spawner, and we just set that back to the pedestrian it comes with. Pedestrian, there we go. We now have the original pedestrian, and they've got custom scalable meshes. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you do it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, join the Discord. I probably won't see YouTube comments, so join the Discord if you have questions. Thank you.